All right, welcome back, everybody. Memorial Day 2024. Here on Sports Talk, we're live as we are every Memorial Day. Great to have you with us. Hopefully we're providing a little something extra on your day because it's a big day. It's Baseball Selection Day. And four South Carolina teams are headed to the NCAA baseball tournament. We've heard from Gary Gilmore. We've heard from Coach Mark Kingston, 705. We'll hear from Clemson coach Eric Backich. And sandwich in between all of that, and, and I have to apologize because we here at Sports Talk, and I take the responsibility, did a very poor job by not having Coach J.J. Edwards from Wofford on with us earlier. So up front, I apologize for that, but then I back that up by saying congratulations and better late than never. Good time to have you on because you're going to the NCAA tournament, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. How's it feel to you? Um, I'm going to be honest. We were we played so many games in in so little of time that I think it is finally setting in. Uh, we were just, I felt like we were at four field in Greenville for, it felt like two months, but it was only five days, but we played seven games. So it is, it is slowly setting in. I think the amount of text messages and phone calls and emails of, of the baseball community and, and, you know, players that you coached and, and fans ha- that have reached out is like, that is kind of setting in the most is so many people reaching out and congratulating us. You guys had to do it the hard way. I mean, you had to come up through the loser's bracket, and you had to beat Sanford twice yesterday, uh, and yeah. you got it done. How exhausting was that for your staff and your players? Um, I, th- I think I was, I was telling people, I was like, I think I'm more exhausted than the guys were because they never faded. They never faded. We had a freshman catcher who caught all seven games. And like he he had a home run and a and a single in his last two at bats and I was like can he even run right now and he's like yeah my my glutes started going a little bit at the end I go yeah you caught seven games in five days he's like yeah yeah and I was like he's like but you weren't gonna take me out I go nor was I gonna yeah I wasn't gonna take you out at all like you're one of our better players but I think we were more exhausted from a mental standpoint but those guys never faded at one point throughout those five days so. Of course, you knew you were in, but when you saw your name go up on the billboard, uh, the big board, I'm sorry, uh, you saw your name go up on the big board in the Chapel Hill Regional. Uh, how'd that feel to you this afternoon? What was uh, what was going on inside your mind? Um, the the excitement from from you know years of years of hard work in this program being on the doorstep numerous times. I think that was the first thing of just pure excitement of like, yes, we finally did it. And then that probably lasted about three seconds. And then the mind of a coach started taking over going, okay, like how do we have to prepare? How do we have to be ready for LSU? What happens if we win? What happens if we lose? How do we get there? So Hmm. I'll give it three to five seconds of excitement. And then the rest of it is just planning of how we have to go about attacking these programs. What about your team will impress people when you describe your group? Um, What do you like most about them? They are they are a resilient bunch, and I I think and you know you can look at numbers and do everything. We just play a little bit different of a style than most teams in the country. We run a lot, you know, we'll bunt a lot. We just it's just a little bit different than most teams, just because that's how we had to build it at you know Wofford College when the academic standards are so high and the school enrollment so low that it's it's not for everybody. So we had to build it a little bit different and run a very unique system to to develop and win games. J.J. Edwards, head baseball coach at Watford College, our special guest here tonight on Sports Talk. Terriers finally have broken down the door for a Southern Conference championship since 2007, and once again, another 40-win season for the uh, Terriers. And, Coach, I wanted to go back to your description of your baseball team. It sounds like you described the Kentucky Wildcats for fans who are of the SEC probably understand how they play. They love to run the bases, love to play small ball. Where did that sort of mentality and where did your uh, growth of the game and understanding of the game sort of lead you as a head coach to, to develop this style of Wofford? Yeah, so the the long, longer short story to a shorter story was when I first got to Wofford, it was 2012, and we weren't very good in the aspect of winning and losing. Mm-hmm. And all we tried to recruit was we said, like, we want to recruit good players. And then you would just look up and you had just kind of like, I would say, not an island of misfit toys, but you just have a little bit of everything. <laughs> and we decided that year to kind of to go a certain direction, and we ran the triple option forever at Wofford College. 
So we kind of use that as, as kind of the foundation piece of, hey, run something a little bit different. So when people game plan you, they're game planning for something they don't see every weekend. And the speed, the speed component took, took over in that aspect. Um, and we just started recruiting athleticism and speed, and that kind of took off. And now we've won a lot more games, and we've got better talent with the, still the speed and the athleticism. And that's kind of how that baby was born, and we've, we've kind of just ran with it and, since 2012. Coach, how good a player, and his his statistics sort of back this up, so it may be a silly question, but how good a player is Marshall Toole? And, and I ask that question because I look at a guy batting three eighty three that has 93 hits on the season, 10 triples on the year, but he's also walked 37 times, so he appears to be not only a very good hitter, but a patient one as well. Yeah, so somebody was asking today about him, and his development has been remarkable. He, he has always been had the ability to run, and that's kind of what attracted us to the beginning. But he has really, really put in time to hone in his craft. Anybody who plays a summer in the Northwoods Collegiate League, which is roughly 175 games, jokingly, of course, but I feel it feels <laughs> that way. Um, I think he walked out of that place with 260 at-bats after playing a summer up there. And anybody who goes up there and stays the whole time, you are going to develop, and you are going to figure out what your strength is. So he is – a, but he is a fantastic baseball player, but the growth seeing from his freshman year to now is just remarkable. And a couple of scouts came over. We were playing a midweek game against Charleston Southern, and they go, hey, and they look at the stats just like everybody else. Hey, what do you got on this kid? And I said, he's going to have the fastest time to first base. If, if he was in the Major League Baseball this year, he would have the fastest time to first base. And they look at you like, hey, yeah, everybody pumps their own players because that's what humans do. And I go, okay. And then two innings later, he ran a 3-4-4 on a bunt to first base. And they looked, and I go, I wasn't lying. <laughs> and I think the fastest time in Major League Baseball last year was a 3-5-2 on a bunt. And he did a 3-4-4. And I was like, yeah, I told you. And it is, he has started to put the ball in play a lot more. And when you start putting the ball in play a lot more, when you run that well, a lot more hits are going to happen. Well, I guess this is a good thing because somebody's got to try and knock them off to begin the uh, tournament, and you guys get that opportunity. You face the defending national champions in LSU. Clearly, I'm sure you know a good bit about them just reputation-wise, but how much have you been able to dig right. into the Tigers and figure out a way to attack them on Friday? Yeah, so I, the good thing is with with the way the Internet works, I feel like their highlights are up every every day on YouTube, so I get to watch them every time they play a game <laughs> midweek or weekend. So. I feel like I am – I don't know if I'm a fan of LSU, as in like somebody who roots for me, but I watch a lot of their baseball games and a lot of highlights, so I feel like I've known a lot about them. But, geez, their talent is really, really good, and it seems like they're clicking at the right time, which, which you kind of want to do as you walk in the NCAA tournament. So, uh, talent-wise, you're, you're not going to see a, a better program out there, especially coming off a championship in a, in a program that's been here before. That's kind of the scary part. Well, I got to believe when they look over your numbers, a 340 team batting average, which is number three in the country. Uh, you guys touched on your steals, 144 out of 163. Plus, you've been plunked 104 times. You've drawn 310 walks. I mean, your guys get on base. Um, but I'm impressed by the hit by pitch. I mean, what do you tell your guys? Just stand in there and take it like a man? What do you tell them? It, the, there's a crazy story to it. We used to teach it all the time, and we used to try to do, like, all these little tactics to how to coach it. We're like, we're going to get, you know, little camp softballs that you use for, like, little kids camp, and anytime you pick it up in BP, you're going to drill a kid so they get comfortable. Re and we've done all these things. And to be honest with you, what, what worked the most was we started rewarding them for getting hit in the, in the game. We gave them candy. We started giving them candy for getting hit in the game. And since that point, and if you look up at our stats, we started doing that three years ago. And as soon as we started giving them, we call them roll bags. So anytime it's like Tootsie Rolls, Rollos, Fruit Roll-Ups, kind of punny on it. And as soon as we started doing that, and I've, I've told, like, coaches, they're like, hey, how does he – and I, they look at you like you have four eyes. And I go, yeah, we might be creating diabetics out there, giving him so much sugar, <laughs> but it seems to be paying off in the long run here. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you're ranked in the top 30 nationally, hit by pitch. I mean, highly ranked with your average and with your stolen bases. I mean, you're, 
you got offensive weaponry. I, I guess you just have to hope you can handle that LSU pitching and, uh, and make them sweat a little bit out there. If not, just go out and beat them. Yeah, yeah, that, that is the game plan. I don't know how often we see the arms that are going to roll out, but we will be prepared as much as we possibly can, and, and, and hopefully our style plays well against it. Well, we thank you for being with us. Uh, we know we'll talk to you again. Uh, good luck. Congratulations again. What an honor for you and your program in your first year to get to the tournament. And uh, have a great time in Chapel Hill, and thanks for being with us. Thank you, Coach. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Thank you very much. One. Yeah, you too, J.J. Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> I love his approach. We I like him. looked at the Wofford football team and saw how they did things differently, uh, and, and they're doing the same thing. They are seventh in the country in stolen bases mm-hmm. with 144. Number three Reminds with a batting Kentucky. average of 340. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, I mean, you got, if you're LSU, those numbers have got to get your attention. There's no doubt. So and you, all the pressure is going to be on LSU to open up the tournament. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you, and you wonder if you're LSU. Like, they didn't throw Smith against the Gamecocks uh, in their first meeting. I guess he pitched in the second game. No, I'm sorry. I'm getting confused with Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm getting confused with Arkansas. You wonder if LSU will throw their top guy against Wofford in that first game, not mess around with this thing.